Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to the final video in my daughter's guitar. This uh, has been, this has been a rather long series and convoluted and complicated and, uh, but it's all good. So it started out with a prototype kit guitar that we made at Crimson a long time ago, and the body was far too heavy. In fact, it was so heavy we didn't sell it, and I took this to a show with me uh, to play around with finishes and stains and, and, and bits and pieces live uh, on stage. And the end result was a relatively pretty guitar. It had a, a, a blue to purple fade and it was, it was cool. My daughter liked the look and said, hmm, hi daddy, how you doing? Here you go, sweetheart. And she sort of, you know, it was very heavy. We have taken it and reduced the weight incredibly. Lots of holes, lots of cavities, and I'm really, really happy with the 3D effect. You can see I've got a uh, cocktail stick stuck in the end, so uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm really, really happy with how the guitar has turned out, but in today's video, in today's video, it's the final one, I'm gonna be taking uh, my daughter's name, and creating a Fender style logo in 3D uh, aluminium. So I'm gonna take a sheet of, of metal, and essentially it's half of the inlay process. It's cutting out uh, the, the outlay, I suppose, polish it up, and then affix it to the guitar, and have a pretty cool looking thing. And it is the last little bit. After, that is, I get the uh, strap button fitted properly, so on we go. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> I haven't used the Starbond accelerator with this finish before, and I don't know if it will damage the finish. At this stage, I'm not going to risk it. So there we go. Cut the excess off, and I'll leave that to cure for a while. Fret end cutters are really useful, actually, for a myriad, myriad tasks. So what I have here is a very blank and very boring headstock, and here is, here is the logo uh, that Bear created for me. I've asked for various different sizes from 45 millimeters to, uh, to 60, and I need to figure out, ooh, and we've also got solid, I need to figure out which one works. I think it's going to be the 50. I like that. So now the other thing is that's a very straight, that's a great big straight line, whereas that isn't. So I'm wondering about changing it in that way. So I'm going to take the logo, the smaller logo, and I'm going to use the J from one of the bigger logos. Maybe not that one. Maybe the 55. It's a subtle difference. But yeah, that, that is closer to the Fender logo uh, in my mind. Cool. One of my favorite tools is masking tape. I use this for absolutely everything. So that gives us the effect we want, gives us the look we want, while, uh, yeah, it should be relatively easy to, uh, to achieve. The glue will have cured in the end of the guitar, so let's just get this back in place. Now if this goes well, it's not gonna push. Okay. The guitar, the guitar can be put away somewhere else. I'm really, really happy with how this guitar has ended up sounding. Uh, and feeling, it just feels, it feels great. 
Time for an inlay jig. These things are very simple, but make life so much easier. Now, a jeweler will just have this top section and it clamps off to the front of their bench. I prefer having one that sits in your end vice. It allows you to work at uh, various heights. I rarely sit at my bench. That's just me. A lot of people sit at their benches, but I, I just don't. I'm gonna be using a relatively small vintage uh, jeweler's saw. Uh, now this is one that came out of the vintage tool shop. I don't really like the feel of that handle. Hold on one second as I digress. Honestly, as much of the process of building is to do with being happy with the tools and being comfortable in your own skin and working area, from the height of the workbench to the, to the level of the jeweler's uh, jig and, and all of that. And um, literally just the feel of this handle was a little bit off-putting. If I'm going to be doing this for a while, let's uh, make sure it's comfy. Okay, that'll do. And we're ready. I'm going to redo this. Uh, I'm going to cut away all the excess and uh, prepare this properly. Now the first part is going to have to actually be drilling the holes uh, in the J and the A and not the S, that's not connected. So it's just two, two, two drill holes to do. Even with a material as common and uh, readily available and inexpensive as aluminium, I do try and keep it as close to the edge as possible. I'm just gonna drill straight through into this. So, I'm getting rid of that section of the A, but I'm going to join the J to the A because I do want this to be in one piece. Now, it's incredibly important that you have a good quality blade. <laughs> in fact, the bet here should be how many blades will Ben go through today. I'm going to cut out the outline of this uh, whole inlay. Dang, damn it! One millimeter in, everybody. I'm not using this uh, saw. That's sad because uh, I really like how it looks. Changing over to this one means that I can get those uh, those cavities done first. Now the issue with this one is that I do have to use a pair of pliers or my Leatherman to, to tighten them up. They tend to slip. Now the trick, I do a combination of moving the, the saw and the workpiece at the same time. This is not going well. Trying out some new blades, and I'm, I'm very aware that this is gonna sound like an excuse. 
I'm trying out some new blades. And uh, can you see how these have got that very blued effect? They look like blued screws uh, on a high-end watch or whatever. Um, I think that these are, have been heat treated too much and they're too brittle. I do not normally break blades every two to four millimeters. Uh, so, yeah, let's see. And the next time I break a blade, I will cut out that central section. So I'm holding the back of the blade against the cut that I've already made. I'm pulling backwards on it. And now I'm starting to move forward again. I'm going to carry on cutting. I was tempted to uh, to tape up the cut that I've just made, but uh, let's see let's see how it goes. So I'm holding the masking tape down with my fingernail. And I'm going to ignore the dot over the eye for now. This would be the most annoying time for me to break a blade. Right about here. Woohoo! Okay, so I've got. I'm happy with the hole there. I just need to cut this away. And we're done. I'm just putting the little blade in. Now, at this point, the inlay is a lot lighter and uh, it's easier to, uh, to do this. The. The thing is, if I was doing Mother of Pearl, I would 100% want to cut these this smaller hole before I cut the outline out so that it was properly supported. Look at that. So that last blade did 99.5% of the work without any issues. So uh, maybe it was all down to my technique earlier, those two blades snapping. Uh, now it does occur to me, <laughs> it does occur to me that that's absolutely awesome, uh, that I could at this point adjust the curve because it's aluminium and it could um, uh, it would just move that would be absolutely fine so if we like the look of that we can do that in a bit hmm. 
All right, so what I'm going to do here quickly is uh, I'm just going to polish the back end of that with a... Oh, with some diamond. There we go. Okay, so this is an easy lap diamond hone and stone. That's fairly cool. Leveling beam. Oh, there we go. I tell you, leveling beam, even if you have no interest in building guitars, a leveling beam is something you should have in your workshop. They have so many uses. There we go. Okay. I have to keep the whole inlay supported right on the edge. And if I don't do that, then I run the risk of distorting it horribly. And yeah, breaking it. And that would be sad. I'm using the safe edge quite a lot, even against the uh, the inlay itself or well, outlay. This isn't an inlay. This is a an onlay, an application. I don't know what is this. So that's, that's coming together. Now, jewelers, jewelers work this way, up against the edge, uh, but they also tend to be sitting down. I don't do that. I'm going to get my ISO tunes in, at least on one side, and uh, lose myself in this. That's working out rather well. So it's a combination of uh, round needle files and this, uh, I suppose it's called a knife blade. My thought was that I was going to 
polish this, but I actually quite like the rough. I like the rough look. I shouldn't have all the files stored touching each other. This is bad form. It really is. But I just don't know what to do. Look at that. Tiny little thing. Oh, there we go. So it's not quite half round as an oval. It might do. That might do. There we go. That's a half round, although it looks very blunt. Let me know in the comments what you think. So at this stage, I'm just uh, hitting it with 240 grit sandpaper. The funny thing is the plan this morning was literally just to cut out a bog standard inlay and, uh, or at least squared off edged thing and just be done with it. And the second I got working, I realized that I had to turn it into a 3D, a 3D effect, thus making my entire day harder, but so much more satisfying. So, I've got a fairly gentle uh, brass brush here. You don't need the actual machine. I'm getting... I think if this was in the Dremel, that could be problematic. But actually doing this by hand seems to be getting everywhere I need. All right, well, that wasn't the plan, but hey, there we go. A suede brush might work as well. I'm gonna put this in the Dremel and see what happens. Uh, before we even get anywhere near that though, eye protection. I've got a battery powered one. Okay, hopefully this just works. Oh, super gentle. Okay, this is quite scary, but it is also, yeah, it's working. As long as you go gentle, it's fine. Okay, 
Now, next up, fret rubbers. And I'm only pulling, but these are, it's getting in where I need it to get in and yeah, should work. Go gentle then. And this is a medium fret rubber that I'm currently using. Fine. And onto the super fine. I'm going to carry on with some uh, chrome polishing compound. I could have done with wire wool to get in all the bits and pieces, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't have the right, I don't have that yet. I'm going to use this, which is a, a fret leveling, a prototype of a fret polishing tool. It's essentially a fret leveling file handle with some uh, very good quality leather on it to act as a strop. I think this will work quite well here as well. So what we'll have is some really shiny areas along the top and some more things on the side that aren't quite as shiny, but that effect is not unattractive. This really is very delicate. I'm using the corner to go into the, the gaps to a certain extent. I'm enjoying this. All right, so this isn't perfect. but it is definitely something I'm happy with. Okay, more thoughts, more thoughts. Let's get this in a Dremel and see what happens. I'm not currently sponsored by Dremel, but I think I probably should be. Now, I'm going to use some polishing compound, actually. Uh, not Jewelers Rouge, but some black. Well, that's no, aluminium. Let's see. Hold on. Back in a second. So I've got a, a multi set of uh, Lux polishing compounds. They're each different uh, grades. And uh, it actually comes with a cheat sheet that tells you what color to use on most uh, mini metals. Aluminium is not in there, but yeah, is what it is. I could easily spend another hour or two on this and go further and further and further into the down the rabbit hole of polishing and sorting and polishing and sorting and uh, uh, believe me I'm tempted uh, but I also need to crack on and get this thing installed so <laughs> well I'm just clearing up the mess, tidying up 
before we move on. Aha, yes. Oh, look at that beautiful thing. So here we go, 0 0.65 millimeter, 0 0.7, 0 0.89, 0.7. So I think we'll go with a 0.7, shall we? That's a tiny drill bit. Fun stuff. I don't need to go in that box from one year to the next, but when I do, I really do. So I'm gonna use this little Archimedes drill and I'm gonna sincerely hope that I don't break this drill bit. Now, as I go through the metal into the wood, ah, there you go. Did I actually go through? No, I didn't. Okay, I feel like I need to hold this down. I'm just gonna use some masking tape. I'm going to get some lubrication going as well. Here we go. So this is some, uh, I think it's a microcrystalline wax. This should help. It does feel better actually. All right, I think I've gone through. Look at that. I mean, it's simply a case of uh, doing the same thing again. Just let the tool do the work. There we go. We've got a hole there. We've got a hole there. Nice. Okay, uh, so this is the piece of steel that I found. Just a little bit of 240 grit to, uh, to clean this up. Okay, so this is should be slightly larger than the hole. Five, six, seven, this is 0.8 actually. So I've got a tenth of a millimeter. My hole is a tenth of a millimeter too small. It feels like Formula One. Yeah, one half of a millisecond behind him. All right, so that's actually now gone through. Uh, this end is fairly rough, which is why it's acting as a drill bit. This is absolutely not an efficient use of one's fingers. There we go. We've just gone through. Fairly short. So it's now nice and flat. All right. So I've polished both ends.
flip it over. There we go. Nice. Super nice. There we go. 1200 grit, wet and dry. Just on that J. I should have done this. I should have done the polishing after putting these in, but I thought I was going to have a different solution. It's all my bad, all my bad. All righty, now. Time to get the guitar out. We're thinking about uh, getting some nice leather to, to use as uh, workbench pads. And here it is. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm after there. What I'm gonna do is yet another masking tape trick. So when you need to mark a position on something nice and hard like this, uh, but you don't want to put too much pressure on everything, loosely apply some masking tape where you need your thing. Don't burnish it down. And then when you've got your position right, it's just a case of Gently applying pressure, and you should. So there's the one. There's the other. That's there. I'm just checking how straight that is, because uh, if that had a curve in it, the positioning would be off a little bit. Still need this, don't I? Okay, I can normally sense how deep I've gone, but with this I don't seem to have that. And I also normally avoid using masking tape as a depth stop because it can move. But uh, I'm going to do it in any case. Now, I'm just going to take that out. Get the swarf a little bit and crack on. And I now have two very precise holes exactly where I need them to be. They're a tad smaller. I'm wondering about actually just hammering them in. That should be all right. What do you think? Yeah, I don't want to use glue of any sort. I just want to hit this thing in and uh, see what happens. See so yeah, the shinier your hammerhead is, the better it's going to be at uh, not damaging what you're working on. Of course, this is where it could go catastrophically wrong. Yeah, that one's... Going in. Do you know what? I kind of want to leave it here. Isn't that cool? You guys see what I'm, can you guys see what I'm seeing? So 
Ta-da. That makes the whole thing so 3D. Do 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 do. Is that not a really cool look? <laughs> I don't believe I have ever seen a logo suspended in that way. Woohoo! Woo bloody who! Ha! I'm incredibly happy with this. Uh, I could not be happier. Now I do need uh, to do the eye and we're going to do that quickly now. Yeah, this should do 0 0.05 of an inch. Okay, so that is now a slightly shiny Allen key on the end at least, and that's going to be, oh, look at that. Looks like I've got a bit of a fiber optic in there or something. That's quite cool. So that's going to be my eye in there. I just need to uh, chop that off. 1.25 millimeters, basically. I think 1.3 is uh, around about what we need, don't you? Way 1.2. That's where I want that. Cutting in reverse is actually quite useful. Okay, so that was uh, that was drilled at 1.2. I do just want to go in with a, a 1.3, and I'm definitely going backwards there. Okay, so that's allowed me to let's just clear the excess off, and uh, should make it look a little bit tidier when we uh, when we go in. Using this as a depth stop. Deeper than that. So, so that's where I want to cut this off. I'm a good boy, I am. So, you see, what I was doing was standing here with one facing that way and one in my hand, so nothing was going to go anywhere near me anyway. But, yeah, you need to be careful. I think I just finished the guitar. So I had ended up whacking that a little bit and the E went down somehow, but in the end, in the end I am now intensely happy with how this guitar has turned out. You can see the difference in the shine between the aluminium and the the steel of the hex bolt, you can see, and the chrome even in the uh, in the parts that the whole thing. Well, it is what it is. All right, let's hear what we've got. So this is a Rajani amp. You can get them from or through either Rajani directly or uh, uh, Leo and Ted's, who are one of my favourite uh, dealers. Just one of the nicest chaps in the industry. Look, we're, we're at the end of this build. It has taken far too long. We've saved a lot of weight, taken it down to uh, the, the, the weight of an instrument that most people would be happy with playing. And it has also improved the sound, in my opinion. Uh, the, the pickup required some messing about. 
I had thought it was a good idea to put hex bolts in there and turns out they were stainless steel and therefore not magnetic and therefore didn't affect, well, actually detrimentally affected the tone of the guitar. So I've swapped those out and changed them back. Uh, it is only a single pickup, but the end result is my daughter now has a guitar that she will feel comfortable playing. She has a guitar that is visually unique, I think. And most importantly, it's something I built for her and something that uh, whether she sticks with playing or not, it makes no difference. It's something from me to her that most, I don't know, it makes me feel good. Uh, I've enjoyed this. I have really, really, really enjoyed this process, and I hope you too. You have too. I hope you have too. In any case, the guitar sounds all right. So this is just playing around with the volume control. This pickup, this guitar, the weight, how comfortable it is, the whole thing is doing it for me and I could not be happier. Thank you very much for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you have yet to do so. Consider joining, uh, checking out Crimson Guitars Extras channel where some of this build was streamed. Uh, we do uh, Luthi's Question Time on Sunday evenings and then live stream builds at various times through the week, generally on Mondays, but it happens. Most importantly, go make some sawdust, make some guitars of your own. Check out Great Guitar Build Off. It is currently happening. It's a place to be. See you guys soon. Goodbye.